Hello boys and girls and welcome back to the Rexmore channel. Today we are going to be taking a look at what I consider to be the most important event in Rust. And that is of course what we're looking at right here and that's Cargo Ship. Now this is one of two possible variations of Cargo Ship but both will offer you the same loot and resources. Now regardless of which cargo ship you end up with, you will have the same layout for your scientists waiting for you, and they of course are your primary first concern with getting to your loot boxes. Now once you do clear past the annoying little blue aimbotters, you will find yourself free access to many loot crates as well as three unlockable crates. Now these unlockable crates will feature loot such as high-end components, AKs, L9s, Bolties, scopes, C4, and the lot, so it is very important that you're able to secure those crates. Now one reason it is important to get to cargo early on is these crates will actually respawn every time the cargo ship respawns a new lock unlockable crate. Um, and these unlockable crates will actually spawn at 2 to 8 minute intervals I believe between each other. So you do want to loot all of the crates as quickly as you can, and once you've done so, completely looting them, make sure to throw any loot on the ground if you don't need it. Um, they will actually completely respawn for you, and uh, you'll get yourself considerably more loot by doing so. Now unfortunately, that means if you get here and all three crates are already on the ship, you will be getting considerably less components. And, uh, loot overall. Now, you will still get the loot from the three hackable crates. However, your components will be considerably lessened, as well as your scrap. Now, first things first, before we can drool over our AKs and snipers from cargo, we need to get there. And getting there is going to require some form of transportation. Now, you might luck out like I did and find a boat randomly around your map. Otherwise, you might need to go over to a fishing village. Now, if you don't want to leave finding a boat to random chance, you are going to want to approach one of these fishing villages, easily located on the map by the fishing village sign, as well as the boat vendor and shop symbol. Now, you do have a small and a large fishing village on the map. Either one of them will sell you a boat for the nice cost of 200 or 125 scrap. You just want to come over here, ignore the hemp plants, and you're just going to talk to this gentleman. Here, he will bring up some small talk. You will say you would like to buy a small motorboat. Sure, that'll be 125 scrap, and you'll buy that. Um, I don't actually have any scrap on me, so he's just mad at me, and he won't sell me a boat. It'll respawn here. When your boat does spawn in, you do actually have um, immunity. Nobody else can get in your boat, and if your teammates need to get in your boat, you actually have to drive it out of that dock area and come over here or to the land for them to get in. Now, I will be putting the other method of boarding the cargo, which is, of course, to be a minicopter, uh, somewhere later in the video, and there should be a timestamp down below. But for boating up to cargo, it is pretty straightforward. Once you've acquired your boat, whether through randomly finding one or getting it through the fishing village, you kind of just want to sidle yourself up to cargo. Now, when I approach cargo, first thing I do is I check for this scientist up here and those two at the back. Now them being there indicates to me that no one is likely already on the cargo ship and that's a great sign meaning you're probably safe to board um, but of course you are going to have these annoying scientists shooting at you the entire time. Now they can do quite a number on you but once you get close to the ship they actually can't see you anymore and you just kind of want to saddle up without being too aggressive because that'll happen. Well I mean there you go that's what not to do. So, so obviously that was demonstration purposes only. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rather safely pull up behind the boat here. Sidling up out of the line of sight of the scientist. This would also actually reduce the ability of someone else to be able to tell that I am approaching. Of course, they will eventually hear the boat sounds. But you're going to want to sidle on up. And once you get close enough to the ladder... Um, you can actually just press E and climb. Now from here you can actually just kind of sit on here. Uh, you're fully able to pull your gun out. I'm not touching my keyboard. You can heal if you need to. It's your time to kind of plan out your next move. Of course he's still very angry, but he can't hit me. So, 
gun out. I'm going to board up. No scientist immediately there. No scientist immediately there. He, he's an angry boy. Now, as I'm doing this... Sorry about that. Now, as I'm doing this solo, I actually have a policy, personally, where I like to limit my scientist murders. Um, as they can be very good indicators of other players attempting to board cargo. They can cause other players to think nobody's on cargo. And they can help me find where other players are, are on cargo when they get on, if they do come to counter me. So instead, what I'm actually going to do is, once I'm full health, I'm going to pre-bandy run through these guys shooting at me and if no one hits me I cancel the bandy I'm gonna loot the scientist really quickly now I can sometimes go the one step further and I'll actually chop up this body um, which will hide the evidence of course that I even came down here from here I will of course take out these two scientists you got one on each side so you're just gonna wanna kinda you know he dies pretty easy not a big deal incoming top firing AK comments and then you're going to look for the second one. He'll either be right there. Or he could be a little bit further as there are two sections to the ship. Now once here, you're going to want to look for your crates as quickly as possible. Uh, they won't always be in all the spots, but uh, never hurts to look. Quickly going around. Gonna want to start hacking that as quickly as possible. Double checking for any crates on this side. It actually seems like I got a little uh, bit of a stingy cargo this time. But you do always want to make sure that you get here as early as possible and you loot all of the crates as early as possible to increase the amount of scrap and components that you're going to be getting. Now, Depending on your play style or the server population, you may be okay to completely clear out the ship, which is a good idea if you're looking to maximize your loot gain. As well, sometimes the hackable crates will spawn up and sometimes they'll spawn down, so you'll have to go up eventually anyway. So if you're okay getting the extra loot and clearing out the extra scientists, just uh, find your way up top. Now, you are going to have scientists on the side. You're going to have some scientists in the middle. Some of them are going to go down easy. And you're going to also have the ones up top. Now, of course, you can easily conserve your ammo and just kind of drop them. They really aren't anything too special unless you get yourself low or too close to them. Um, scientists like the shotgun ones obviously can cause you quite a bit of damage. This is actually perfectly normal. And to loot him, you're actually better off letting that body despawn, which will take a little while. And then it'll just kind of drop to the floor. But of course, you, you might want the loot. Where did he shoot me from? Those, those top guys. So, I'm always torn about them because there is a crate up there, right? So you will get that crate. But I actually like to really leave that guy and those two alive because they'll actually start shooting at boats as they begin to approach which is like a huge oh hey i'm about to get attacked you know um one thing that people don't talk about and, and it's totally what i'm blaming here is the fact that um the cargo ship is actually turning and moving and it's one of those things that you would really notice when you're using a bow um but the bullets don't actually travel perfectly straight enough bullets are actually pretty good um it's not too big of an issue there's not enough pull for it to be an issue but your arrows will actually go to the side now that lovely sound there was the sound of a crate spawning um it will sound i think three times which does mean that i missed opportunities with refreshing some of these crates i believe because once this starts you've already got respawns but coming back here, none there, none there. Oh, there we go. And then, of course, you go back down as quickly as you can. Working my way back up, we've got this gentleman here. He, he, he's fine. He just kind of chills there. And then there should be a guy over here. Oh, okay, never mind. My bad. Uh, there would be one over there, I believe. 
Unless I killed him from the other side. Nope. Again, so if they do get glitched like this, because the cargo ship is moving, this happens. You just want to wait until the uh, body despawns. Ooh, I saw that for a second. There was an explosive in there. That's actually really good. Now, you notice, I don't have any room for it. Now I'm going to, of course, drop the pickaxe. Now I can come back for the pickaxe. Now, what you want to do is you want to come back here to the back of the cargo ship, which, again, there's a possibility of crate spawning right here, and there's some up there, and I'm going to show you that in one second. But this is going to be your storage box. Now, you are going to want to be careful when you do this, because you can actually fall off your ship, and it is actually possible to drop the boat accidentally. But once you're on this ledge here, you want to jump straight onto your ship, come over to this box, and you have storage. Now, one thing I recommend is, or actually don't recommend, is storing all your meds and storing anything valuable. So essentially, or guns. You, you don't want to give someone the ability to kill you. So essentially how I think about it is if someone were to board cargo ship right now, and it was a team of eight, and I had to jump off and swim to land, I would lose this. Like, I'm not going to fight through eight people and get over here and take this boat out. They'll, they'll kill me. So anything I leave in here, I have to almost be okay with losing while also maintaining my inventory process or inventory space for, you know, carrying more loot back to the ship. So it is a risk reward factor. You will have to plan that out. Anyways, we're going to go up here. We're going to take out the last two scientists, I believe. It's going to be one. Nope. Okay. Yeah. 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 He, he'll either spawn on that side or this side. Oh, good. More pickaxes. And then you're going to have a captain. He's just kind of chilling up here. Um, he's a special man. And you can have a crate spawn right here sometimes. More meds, how handy. And then up here we have this crate that I mentioned earlier. And of course our scientist boys that we shot down from the bottom. Now of course as with any game, high ground is key and in rust that is no different. Being up top up here or even up there is going to give you your best advantage or vantage point for any boats coming in from any direction or if a heli tries to board onto your ship. Taking them out before they board is key as letting someone board your ship uh, can very easily prove fatal. Up here is an easy way to guard. Uh, while gliding will reduce damage, but you know, he's still going to get hurt. That's, that's, that's up to you. This is one of my other favorite spots. You have very easy access to just kind of hide here if you don't want to get seen as they come up to the ship you can hear the boat approaching and then choose what side you need to be on and all you need to do is shoot them to death right here this little area here it, it does exist on both sides of the ship uh, it is a very good cover point where you won't be too visible as somebody approaches and you have a great vantage point up close to just gun anybody down now you are aiming to stop them from boarding on the ladders. If you can get them before they board, that's your best option. Uh, killing them in their ship, obviously, is going to result in you losing the loot, but it is a lot safer than letting them on your ship. Now, if you are preparing for people coming on your ship, holding these positions can often be very good, um, unless you do have this cargo, which has that in my way. <laughs> on the other cargo, you actually have a clear line of sight down this. And on this side, you do. So here, you would see as they board up, you also have the option of shooting their boats here. But as soon as they get up the ladder, you can free fire them and take them out there. Now, of course, that doesn't help you against minis that come, and a minicopter will actually heavily counter you if that's the method you're going for. Now, this is the kind of loot that you can be getting from these crates, which is why it is so valuable. Taking cargo in the first three hours of a light gives you a really good advantage against other players and makes it very hard for people to keep up with you and compete. Now, one trick that you can use, you'll notice because I already looted one of the crates, it is actually visible on the map that one of the crates is missing. If you leave items in the crate, it will not show as missing. And alternatively, you can actually switch items. So what you would do is, it won't work if you try it this way. But if you want to take all the loot, you can switch it like this. And it'll leave the cloth. Then, of course, I can take the pipes if I wanted. 
doing that to all three crates means no one will know when you've actually completely looted the crates and they might actually think nobody's still on cargo if the crates haven't gone anywhere. Of course, this is my preferred method of boarding cargo, but it is a costly method. It does let you get there much quicker than anyone else, but it does carry quite a bit of risk. Um, if you don't jump off that minicopter at the correct time, you could end up exploding yourself. You can hover the minicopter and choose a variety of landing points. Um, some people do, especially if you're countering, landing up top can be very handy. If I'm doing cargo and I know nobody else is on there because I've done a flyby or something, I usually just go for the back as it does give you a nice secure spot to start clearing out the ship. Uh, in which case I will just kind of gently fly in and then right before the heli touches the ground You just kind of want to jump out the heli is of course gonna either fall off or explode It won't stay on your cargo. There's no way to do it. it it's just it's gone But but I'll get you here Spawning every two to three hours cargo will only last on the map for 40 minutes This means if you show up too late Cargo will actually begin to take off with the loot crates here. You will get a warning sound. Um, there it is, actually. Once that warning sound starts, you will have only a few moments to get to your boat, get down, and get out of here. If you do not leave and heed this warning sound, you will notice the cargo quickly turn. Um begin to leave the island oh I got myself semi stuck and you will actually begin taking radiation damage this radiation damage is not something you can live through and you will not be able to wait it out to take these cards or to take the last crates if you happen to find yourself in the situation where the ship begins to leave the island your only choice is to leave the ship Staying on the ship will result in your death, and you'll have no other option.